guys, we're back with Behind the Bikini episode 30. We like these nice round numbers. We have made it to 30. This is 30 weeks of this podcast, which is freaking awesome. Um, yeah, we, we're, we're just rolling right along. No, no end in sight. Literally. <laughs> So, no end in sight. <laughs> no end in sight. So you're stuck with us. Um, so if you haven't done so already, you need to like, comment, subscribe, share this with all your friends, all of the fun things that helps us with the algorithms. Yeah, all the buttons. We're always like anywhere, <laughs> just the buttons. Wherever they I, tur- are, I turned off my reaction so I shouldn't get all the fireworks and stuff. Oh, uh, we'll you see. figured out what it was? Finally, yeah. Finally. It's, a, it's, a, it's a reaction on your on your computer or something? Yeah, yeah. it's literally called Reactions in Apple. Ooh. So if you're noticing on FaceTime that you're getting all the things that I was, I fig- finally figured it out. <laughs> oh, wow. I, see, I, and I, see, I use Microsoft, so I have no idea. I'm like, I, I, have, I have Windows. I don't know. <laughs> do you have an <laughs> iPhone, though? Lame. Do you have an yeah, iPhone? I do. So, yeah. so if you're ever on FaceTime and you scr- I think you scroll from the top right and it gives you, like, the settings or whatever for the FaceTime call and it's called okay. Reactions. So there's different, like, thumb movements you could do. So when the fireworks happened, it was me doing this. Oh, and then I never did this before, but apparently if I do that, then rain and like a sad face starts coming out of your, who knows? This I, I stuff. Oh, wow. Like, I'm going to have to I'm look old. into that now. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not going to like put those on there for like my posing clients. Be like, yay. And no, yeah, that's no. bad. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Exactly. That's too funny. I, I have so many um, master's ladies that I work with that they would all be like, what's going on? <laughs> like, and I, so, I'm, not, I'm not hating on you master's ladies. I'm a master's lady too. Once we get up to our 40s, we're like, what the f- is going on with this technology shit <laughs> listen i'm a, i'm a few years off of that too and i'm like I, the, the more that i get older and then i'm asking like my staff or like younger people to help me yeah. with my phone, like, oh no i am now that person <laughs> you're that person you're that person yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man it's, it's just it's <sighs> so yeah wonderful so speaking of speaking of things evolving we're gonna be talking about macros again today guys so this is our third and final uh episode on macros we wanted to kind of round it back out and this time what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about um what you should not be doing with your macros some of the common common mistakes that people make and why their their macros are off from what they're actually doing so that's what we're going to go into today um but before we get into that we were just talking and discussing this prior to getting on on live and i just realized because you said it is that we're probably both going into prep pretty soon I was like, oh, crap. Yeah, right. Did you forget? Right. I forgot. I completely forgot. I'm like, I'm just here living my off-season life, loving loving life. And uh, I just did my check-ins this morning. So I'll give me a talk about this. And I'm dropping weight. I don't I don't know why. I don't really know why I'm dropping weight. I'm like, I'm still eating a lot. And that was the other thing, too. So I have my cheat meal and stuff. This, I don't, again, I'm so stuck on that word. And I don't like that word. I had, I had my free meal. I had my free, free meal. meal. Free yes, meal. my free meal. I had my free meal this week. The last couple of weeks I haven't. This week I did. Um, we went, went out to a comedy show and went out to dinner. It wasn't even like it was crazy, but I had hibachi, so you got a lot of carbs and fats and all that kind of stuff in there that yep. I typically don't have. So um, so I had my had my free meal and I didn't track it. And I still dropped weight this week. And I'm just like, I also, my cardio has not been high either. You know, I, I have programmed in 15 minutes, uh, three days a week, four days a week, four days a week, four days a week, 15 minutes. Um I'm looking at my steps and stuff, and my steps are only averaging about six thousand steps a day, which is bad. I actually want I want it higher. I want it higher. Yeah. But you know, at, at the end of the day, I'm like, how am I still dropping weight when <laughs> I'm eating more and I'm not moving as much? <laughs> I was like, what is going on? So yeah. I'm waiting. We'll see what, what Jamie has to say when, when she reviews my check in. But um, you know, it's not a, it's not a terrible thing like that that I'm you know that kind of thing. But it could also be like I'm not. I don't know. I looked at my photos this morning and I thought I looked pretty damn good. So I don't feel like I'm losing muscle. So like, I was gonna I say. Know. I mean, maybe since your new training uh, block, your actually yeah. intensity is a little bit higher, so your metabolism might be picking up, adding more muscle, so your body might be going through more food. So yeah. it's not a, not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. And that's what I thought too. I was like, you know, and, and, and again, I, I can kind of evaluate my, my photos a lot better than somebody that's newer in the sport. You know what I mean? And I'm like looking at it and I'm like, I just, and I'm on my period too. So. Oh, good. Can you breathe on me through the computer? <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> yeah. This is, this is my go cycle time and my weight's up today. So I'm feeling like it might come. We'll see. Uh, see. And that was the thing. So at the beginning of this week, the, the like last Thursday, my weight was going up a little bit, but I knew that it was about time for my cycle to start, you know, and I started on Sunday and I barely even felt it. Like I, thank God I caught it when I did because I was wearing light colored leggings and that would have been terrible. Why does that always happen? That's the worst. No, right? Oh, I was like, oh, okay. I caught this right on time. Right on time. <laughs> Different parallel. <laughs> That's right. I was like, fantastic. 
Um, and, uh, and I didn't even feel it. Like I, I took videos, posing videos on Sunday prior to it hitting. And I was like, oh, I look good. You know, like normally I bloat, normally I feel it. Normally I'm up a couple pounds. I kind of think I really wasn't. I was up like a pound the whole week, but that was normal. Like I just had a, a free meal. I had a free meal the day before. So I, I figured that's where that was from, you know? Yeah. And then like, it wasn't, it wasn't heavy at all. And it's almost gone right now. And it's Thursday and I just started on Sunday. That's what, that, hey, I don't think you're going to complain about that, right? <laughs> I'm like, am I going through menopause? Oh my God. <laughs> maybe, maybe your body's just getting more efficient with the period of cramps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I'm good. Um, <laughs> but uh, but but I am going to go get my blood work done again on Tuesday. So we've talked about this before. I am deep in improvement season now at this point. So the last time I did it was when I just come out of prep. It was a couple of months after. And, and so my levels were a little bit off. Same thing as what I had going on last year. So I'm going to go back in and get it done again on Tuesday and just see where I'm at now because I've been working on trying to get those levels back to normal. So um, hopefully they'll be more optimized and things like that right now. And then we'll, we'll go from there and take from there if I need to do anything else. But um, it's always a good idea to be checking that stuff. So shout out to Premier Medical because I'm going to do that on Thursday. So thank you for that. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Premier. Mm -hmm. They, uh -huh. they help us us. out. Yep. They sure do. They sure yep. do. Um, you know, you gotta have people you trust too. That's a big part of it as well. So, um, I trust their, I trust their, um, expertise, expertise. Yeah. So I call it your care team, right? Like you're, you have your coach and then your coach has to also be able to get in touch with like your clinic or your doctor. And then your doctor has got to be in touch with your trainer and it's, it, it's your care team. Everybody's got to be able to play well together. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, so yeah, I'm actually looking forward to that. Um, and seeing where we're at with that. What else? Um, I don't know. We'll see what Jamie has to say when I get done with my training today or my check and say when she gets through them. Um, that's the other thing too. So I know my training block that Drew programmed is up as of this weekend. So we'll see if they change anything or not. Um, I don't, I don't know. This will be my first time going through a change at all with his training. Does he typically change it every month or so? Or what is his, what is his thing? If it's not broke, we don't, don't fix, fix it. <laughs> so yep. I mean, I think, I think your feedback is that you like it and you're growing mm -hmm. and you're feeling good. Mm -hmm. So if that's, if that is the feedback, if you know, there's minor adjustments or things like that, or they're seeing something that they want to change as far as like, Hey, you grew up or outer, but we need a little bit more tie in. Maybe they switch, you know, some of those exercises, but most of the time, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. I really, and I was saying, so I checked in this week, like I said, with my check-ins and I was like this week, I was just a little off with my focus, but I think it was really due, due more to my period than anything else. You know what I mean? Like just just kind of feel like eh, when you're in the yeah. gym, you know, yeah. so that's kind of how I felt. Um, I still pushed myself. And actually when I look back at my weights and stuff, my weights were growing and things like that too, as far as how much I was pushing and things like that. And I was really focusing on form a lot this week. Um, Cause I talked to him last week. Was it last weekend or something about those um, one leg, uh, the one where you put the leg on the, I can't think of the name. You put the leg on the, on the bench and then you do. Kneeling RDL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That. So um, I was having issues with that because my legs are so long. <laughs> so it was it was going in my lower back, and I could feel it. Like, and it was different from side to side. So on my left, my left leg is stronger than my right. So okay. on my left, my left leg, I felt it fine. It was no problem. But then when I go move over to my right leg, it went all into my lower back, and I was like, mm. it's just just not as strong back there. I have impingements there. That's where that's the side I pose on. Those are the things I'm working on as far as the imbalances are concerned. So. I took video and I sent it to him and I was like, am I, do I need a taller bench? Basically is what I asked. He's like, yeah, he's like, we're running into this with some taller and some shorter girls too. Just finding the right, the right um, height for your legs. So I did those this week and I used a yoga block on a bench in order to be able to get taller and it was way better. So Good. much better. It hit, it hit the form right. So, um, I was really cognizant of those kinds of things this week and just making sure that I was adjusting whatever my training was so that it was, hitting my body right because i felt like that was the other thing too i felt like uh the week before a lot of my exercises were going to the hamstring tie-in and not into my upper outer glutes so i had to change some some of my structure on the actual on the actual um exercises so yeah um, and kudos to you too for knowing what exercise is supposed to affect what muscle group and that way you can give that feedback to your coach and say hey i think i'm supposed to be feeling upper outer glute here I'm not, you know, and some athletes don't provide that yeah. feedback either because they don't know where the exercise is supposed to target or they don't want to bother yeah. us or whatever the case may be, but we can't fix it if we don't know, right? And for you, it wasn't even about switching out the exercise. It was just adjusting the exercise to work that's with right. your body and your height, you know, so not not one size fits all, you know, and that's yeah. why 
it's really important to communicate that with your coach. There is a way to fix things. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because we were talking about the overdeveloped adductors and stuff like that. I used to have that problem. Um, back when I switched from uh, figure to bikini, when I went to bikini, my adductors were huge. Like they were bigger. They were like bigger than my glutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they were so big. And it's just the yep. way my structure is put together. It's just so easy for me to hit that versus other parts of my of my glute, things like that. You know what I mean? So I am very aware that they grow like weeds if I'm not careful. You know what I mean? So those, that's those interesting you too. say that because something that we see with the athletes that are coming for the assessments is if they typically have an overdeveloped adductor. So mm -hmm. adductor is the inner thighs, if you're inner. not familiar. Um, they have a very hard time growing their upper outer glute, right? Which yep. makes sense because they're yep. weak on the abductor, the outside yep. of the leg. Um, so it's very hard for them to hit that upper outer glute. So that's, you know, what's one of the really cool things we're seeing with all these assessments that Drew's doing is that there is so many um, of the same, you know, with bikini mm -hmm. athletes and how we train and how we pose and things like that. So yep. it's really cool that we're able to kind of see that right away and fix it. Um, yeah. So that makes perfect sense, you know, what you said. Well, it's so funny because, it, again, going back to the awareness, I was, I'm was i hyper aware of it because of feedback I've gotten in the past. Somebody right. else coming in may not may not think it's anything of a big deal, but I know when I'm hitting my, my hamstrings, my adductors versus my glutes. I know, I know because I used to, I used to have too much, <laughs> you know, I was like, I wish I had one of those photos that I could pop up on the screen. I should, I should have grabbed it, put it up here because my, they were meaty. They were very meaty. <laughs> Actually, no, I probably can't. I probably can't. No I thigh I, gap. I think I <laughs> No, it was it was bad. So I'm gonna I'm actually I can because I sent it to Jamie and to Drew and to show them what I what I used to have. So I ha I know I have it sitting here. Where did I where did I put it? Um, this is gonna this this yes they're big. Okay, you should gonna, put, you should put up your figure uh, shot one time. I know. Um, I you know the, and the thing is is I look back now and I'm like if I had. I thought I just saved that, but maybe I didn't. If I had the the frame that I have now, back when, you know, when I started in figure, when I had when that kind of muscularity was being rewarded, I'd have killed it. I'd have been I'd have been on that Olympia stage in figure, no problem. I know I, I know. Have. So you it's, and it's uh, crazy. Becky, were you and yeah. Becky Clausen and in, in figure around the same time? So it was yep. around the same. Level. Okay, cool. So the funny. So I, as I'm looking for this photo, because this is a funny story. So um, there it is. So. <clears throat> Becky and I, she started a few years before I did in the sport. Um, but we both had the same coach, uh, Mike Davies, and we were both blonde and we were both figure and we both switched <laughs> from, from bikini, from figure to bikini. And there's several times where like Facebook, you know how they do just like the auto tags and stuff like Facebook would tag her in photos of me. And vice versa, because funny Facebook thought it was thought we were the same person. Basically. Funny, I could totally see that. I could it's totally too funny. see that. So she started just a few years before I did, but basically had the same tra trajectory that I did. So okay. it's just funny when we start thinking about those things. And I, I went the direction that I did with the coaching and stuff like that. She went the direction of the judging. So it's it's just it's kind of cool when you look back at stuff like that. But let me show you this photo, and let me just show you my freaking adductors. Like it's ridiculous. This is also back when, when bikini, we used to po do the, the cross leg pose. So not, yeah, yeah. They still do, do that. that. So, holy moly. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the glutes? It's like, it's like, no glutes, all oh, adductors. So that's what wow. we're, talking about. we're talking about adductors, you guys. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's you could literally just grab those, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> look, how, look how long your triceps are too. Holy moly, yeah. that's an, that's a look, a look. <laughs> so this is how much bikini has changed. This was the bikini pro stage. This was my second bikini pro show I ever did, right? So I did Tampa Pro as my bikini pro debut, and this was St. Louis like two weeks later or something like that. Damn so, bold, yeah. You're like yeah. me. Just go right into the wolves at Tampa Pro That's for an amateur. I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, and I was like, I think, I, I think I placed. I think I was like 13th or something like that. It was deep. It was a, that was that wow. show. Um, India Polino won that show. Wow, India Polino won it. Yeah. So I actually did well, and uh, it was definitely the right move switching from figure to bikini and all that. But I still like obviously was not developed. I was I was actually too lean at this point. I was too conditioned. I was too lean for the bikini standard. 
Um, this was too much. I mean, you know, obviously I was unbalanced too, but they, it was just too much. I had too much muscle. I was too lean. But again, this was in 2014. So it was 10 years ago. So a little different. <laughs> and the evolution of posing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thank God. Thank God. Right. You know, it's so funny because the thing about this particular pose, I and mean, you can even see it with me standing here, it's hard to judge symmetry because you have to, you have to pose with your feet crossed. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I, I modified this to this T pose. A lot okay. of the girls were crossing all the way over. I hated that because it was so hard to get in and out of without stumbling. Yeah. So I just did the T pose like this and I felt like it was better as far as the symmetry was concerned and things like that too. Because if you cross all the way over, then one glute would be back and one glute would be forward. And it was just not a good look. So And isn't it very interesting that in this pose the glutes are like completely square to the judges and nowadays in our side glute pose we're like, Don't do that. Don't do yeah. that. Go more profile. Yeah. So this is I mean, this essentially is that side pose just straight on versus on, on the side, right? Right. Right. So yeah, that's crazy when you start and pinching, pinching the back, Uh, you know, you got to squeeze the back. That's right. That was intentional. That was intentional. Guys, anybody listening, this is why you can't look at photos online and YouTube and things like that, because this is not the standard at all anymore. None of this is none of it. So yeah. Yeah. It was fun times. Yeah. Please don't, please don't do that. (laughs) This is not 2014 posing. This is a 20, I'm sorry. This is not, 2024 posing this is 2014 posing so a decade yeah. ago <laughs> a decade ago literally when you, when you say that i feel so old <laughs> i know <laughs> and then i didn't even cancel a sport till five years later so i know it's so crazy how fast the time goes it, it literally feels like this was yesterday but yeah anyway i thought that was i thought that was that was funny because the, the funny part is we were talking about the coaching call and then it, that those pictures i had a collage picture that popped up in my facebook memories the next day and really? I was like, oh, it's right here. <laughs> Look at there's, this. There they are. There they <laughs> <Yep>. are. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. That's so funny. That's funny. this is why you got to stay up on the standards of the sport. Everything That's changes. It. Everything That's changes. It. So um, we did a little bit of a, a review last night, live review on the, the Arnold UK. What did you think of the Arnold UK results and everything? What Did you have um, Vanya winning? Did you have Tara winning? What did you think? I, I honestly had Tara winning. Um, I... Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I love Anya and I love Tara. I think both of them were very, very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought, I thought from what I watched on the live stream that Vanya could have been fuller, but then we saw photos of people that were there and the look looked completely different. So yeah. it's so hard to, we've talked about this to judge um, based on the live stream because I, felt like I was seeing a completely different look. Thank you. Um, than what, um, than what I was seeing on the live stream. So yeah. Um, I was happy with really either though. I think Vanya's yeah. been knocking on that door for a while. I'm so happy for her. So excited for her. Her stage presence is always beautiful. And I think Tara brought a really good package that day too. I feel like Tara looks improved. She's brought her waistline. In. Um, so it was, it was really, I had Tara winning in the morning show. I did not watch finals. So then I didn't yeah. see like how people were coming back. But once I saw those photos, you and I talked after, yep. after prejudging and, um, then I, then I could kind of see it was more Vanya too. So yes. I was really happy with either though. It was an awesome show. It was exciting. Yeah. Well, it was cool to see like, cause typically the, the Arnold UK is not very competitive, right? We have like one or two U S people that go over there and compete in it, Yeah. you know? And then this year, the whole first call out, the whole first call out was from the U S you know what I mean? So it's like, that's exciting too, because back in the day, the, the, the top girls here in the States used to go do all the European shows and stuff like that. That This was before the IFBB and the IFBB elite split. It was before that split. Okay. So all the girls from here used to go over there and just kind of do a little tour and all, and, and then they split and then also COVID happened. So all of that stuff stopped, you know what right. I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of cool to see the girls from the States going over there now, you know? Um, yeah. And the Art of UK is a, re- is a really new show. It's only been around for three years. You know, oh, people different. forget. Yeah, yeah, people forget. Like, this has not been around forever. You know what I mean? So the fact that they're doing what they're doing with that show is really pretty cool. Like, that's one of the good things about being a promoter like an Arnold promoter because he's got so many shows. He can take a new show and elevate it really fast because he can take sure. money from the other shows and put it into the new one. You know what I mean? So people are always like, why don't the other shows look like this? Like, well, because Arnold has like five of those that he can take money from <laughs> to put into the new one. That's why. So it's automatically going to be a little bit better you know, than the other ones when they first start out. So um, people, I don't think people realize that like when you start out as a promoter, 
it's all you. Like that's your show. Nobody helps you. A show, <laughs> you to- <laughs> a show is a business. Like that's yeah. what people I, I feel like tend to, to tend to realize it's a business, yeah. right? The money just doesn't a stage just doesn't appear overnight. The backdrops don't just appear overnight. All the medals and trophies, like these things cost money. And if yep. you're doing a show for the first time, the majority of the time, like any investment, you're coming out of pocket and That's you're right. just hoping for the best, right? Um, That's for right. any business owner, we are first endeavor. You're just hoping to break even and not lose. Mm-hmm. Um, so for someone like Arnold, who has a little bit of cushion from, you know, his savings and then from his, you know, shows and things like that. That's why that, just like you said, that production can be so great off the bat, but not yep. a lot of people are that fortunate when they start a newer show so that's why it's important that if you really believe in that in that promoter you love their shows and they're trying to start a new show in a new state or you know a new concept or whatever you want to try to support them because Mm -hmm. they that we as coaches and as athletes and showing up to their show that's how they make their money back that's right um so that's why i always you know just to shout out joe pishula and clash i love his Mm -hmm. shows he takes care of all the athletes i think that his shows in florida are fantastic he's opening up another show in south carolina so so I want to push my athletes there to support him because I know that he takes care of us. Um, so it's stuff like that, that you have to think about as a, the business side of things. There is a business right. side to the sport. That's right. You know, and, and to uh, piggyback on that, I mean, that's why I decided to go down to the Charlotte Cup. So Charlotte Cup's in two weeks. Charlotte Cup, Charlotte Pro. Um, yeah. yeah. Two and a half. Two next and weekend. Half. Yeah. Next weekend's clash. Mm-hmm. And, yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Gosh. So Whoa, yeah, season no. is starting. I know. I know. I didn't. I didn't initially have that show on my schedule, but now I've got like five or six girls that are doing it on Sunday. So it's gonna be um, a big I've show. Always, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've always wanted to go down for it. I just have never. It's never worked in my schedule. So um, is that put on by Johnny Stewart? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, and one of his clients, one of his, he's a coach to one of the girls, uh, Karen Smalls. I don't, I don't know if you've met her or not. Yeah. But, um, yeah. 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 I know. yeah. Love her to death. She's one of my favorite girls that I work with. Absolutely love her to death. She's a spitfire. She's cracks me up every single one of these 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 uh, posing sessions that we have together and everything. So, um, so I've talked to Johnny several times on the phone, but I've never actually met him in person. But I told him I was like, I really, you know, I want to get out th- down there to your show. So now that this worked out, I'm going to do commentary and everything for the show too on Sunday. Cool. So I'm excited about that. I'm going to drive down on Saturday. I don't Saturday's all like the like figure women's physique um, bodybuilding things like that so i don't have any clients on oh, saturday that's right his show's on sunday that's yes. right mm-hmm. okay yeah so i'm gonna go down on saturday um to like five to six hour drive depending on traffic so it's not bad i do those drives all the time and then um the whole day sunday is the women like npc and pros for women like as far as wellness and um, bikini are concerned so I thought it was cool how he split it up too, because there's a lot of times where I go to these shows and I have to go for the whole thing because they have like pros on one day, NPC on another. But what he's doing is he's doing pros and NPC on both days, but he's splitting up the the, the, the divisions. So like the NPC and IBB pros for bikini and wellness are all on Sunday. Cool. So that it works out great because I can go down Absolutely. there, you know, drive down on Saturday, drive back on Monday, and I can be there all day for the show on Sunday, and I don't have to be there to, from Friday on. You know what Two I mean? Days. Yeah, absolutely. That's really cool. So I love that. And I was like, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Again, going back to, I've wanted to support the show for the last few years because, again, Karen competes in it every year. She's won the 16 over pro show the last two years. So she's going back to do it again, hopefully. Hopefully win it again. Um, <laughs> hopefully. Cross hopefully. your fingers. Yeah. Cross your fingers, cross your toes. All that yeah. kind of stuff. You know, but it'll be it'll be nice to be able to go down there and actually support it this year. Um, and from what I can see, at least from um, my vantage point, I've got a good number of girls doing it. So um, we'll see how the show numbers actually actually um, hold up. But you know, when you've got a show like that, you want to support it. So definitely. You know, so yeah. I'm excited about that. Well, have fun. Yeah. I'll be at that one. I don't think it's not on the schedule right now. Anymore. I know. I was asking Whatever. you. I was asking you yesterday because I was like, "Can we do a podcast?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, never mind. It, w- it was an option, but I don't. I don't think I'm going to that one. <laughs> okay. Okay. There, and that's the thing too. I mean, now that the show, the season starting, the shows there's like freaking ten of them every weekend now. Yep. Like, yep. It's crazy. I'm go. looking at the schedule and I'm like, damn. Okay. <laughs> I was like, geez. Welcome I'm back to the rat race. Right? <laughs> So it'll be, it'll be fun. It'll be an interesting, uh, I feel like it's, and I've said this the last couple of years because we don't really get the season starting until we get into April now. You know, it used to be like as soon as the, as soon as March hit and the Arnold hit, then we had a bunch of shows that just started and that doesn't happen anymore ever since the whole pandemic thing. Now everything's kind of pushed back a little bit until April. Literally we still, like, we still have the, April 1st. Yeah. 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 We still have, um, 
you know, the Arnold and stuff, but that's really it, you know, that's, that's it. So yeah. 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 We're going to, and now everything's on top of each other. <laughs> it's like, and there's much. five shows per weekend now. No big deal. <laughs> yeah. If I could clone myself three times over, that would be very helpful. I know. Not even just once, just three times. <laughs> are you traveling this weekend or are you traveling next weekend? What are you doing? I'm traveling next weekend. Um, okay. So I'm going to be, I will be at Clash, I believe, uh, Clash Orlando. Um, and then from there, yeah, the rat race. And I'm also starting prep on uh, April 1st as well. My birthday is April 10th. So we're going to start like loosely April 1st and then enjoy my birthday and then kind of yeah. go all in. So I'm really yeah. excited. I'm excited to kind of get back in the game and suffer and get back into prep. Um, I did experience an, in an injury last week. I hurt my oh. ribs, which if anybody's ever hurt their ribs, it's yeah, it's a very sucky injury. So um, I'm dealing with that, that right now. Um, I was doing my rotational cable pull throughs and yeah. at the gym that we train at, they have these on the cable machine. You can put a handle out in an out position so you can hold on to it and lock it or you can fold it down. I didn't okay. realize that someone had put it in the outward position. So when I was stepping back to, I, I, I increased my weight. It was a little bit heavy. And then when I stepped back, I stepped back a little bit abruptly and I just nailed that handle right into my intercostals and I immediately oh. dropped to the floor it took it like literally took my breath away yeah oh. so that's been fun um but at, uh, surprisingly enough my training is not affected it's just very tender, tender. Um, like yeah. internally yeah. um so I, I, if it was going to happen I'd rather it happen now now yeah <laughs> yeah can you pose so. or is that is it a problem when you try to pose it, yeah, like the twisting, definitely. Yeah. Like sneezing is the worst. Like mm -hmm. every time I sneeze, I'm like, no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> but legs and everything. Like honestly, the the best I feel is when I wear my belt, like my weight belt. Okay. It's just that, like the like, keeps you braced almost. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's it's slowly getting better. I'm taking some inflammation, uh, BP BPC one five seven. Um, so that's like a, a peptide for inflammation. So I think that's really helping. And uh, other than that, I'm just going to kind of hang in here the next couple of weeks and hang along for the ride and then get ready to lock it back in. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you know, that, that same thing with uh, Dan when he went through his surgery, anytime he would laugh, it would hurt. He's like, don't make me laugh. Don't make me laugh. It's just, it's just one of those things. It's like when you're just sitting around doing nothing, it's, it's fine. But it's when you try to move, it's a problem. Yeah. No, that's fine. Was over the weekend, we were all hanging out and everybody was just making, we were laughing and laughing and laughing. I'm like, oh my God, everybody stop being funny. Stop. Yeah. It yeah. Hurts. That's too funny. Oh my goodness. So, well, yeah, the, 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 we're rolling with the season. So um, we'll, we'll keep touching base on all that kind of stuff and as we move along. But let's roll into our topic for today, which is um, the macros. Where did I put? Oh, what not to do with macros. There it is. We're going to show that on the screen. And then I'm just going to pull up the picture that you sent me. This is going to be a very, should be, it's almost like it should be uh, common sense, but it's not. <laughs> you know what I mean? So can we see this okay? Do I need to zoom it in? I'm can you zoom, zoom it in? in? Bit. Yeah, I can zoom it in. There you go. There we go. Wonderful. Much better. Yeah. Okay. So go ahead and explain how you put this together and, and, and what this what this is trying to, to say as far as how to not screw up your macros pretty much. So yeah, so we were just kind of coming up with some similar uh, issues or problems that we run into when we're working with a client for the first time and we're teaching them how to track macros or perhaps like common misconceptions about macros or even just a way to get more accurate, right? So mm -hmm. Sean and I were just talking uh, before the podcast about sodium and how, you know, when you're an mm -hmm. amateur, you can kind of get away with certain things. But as you continue to climb the ranks and you become a national level athlete and then at the pro level, the the small details matter. Um, to me, when I'm when I'm coaching someone, I try to teach them the small details out the gate, you know, because if we're in the sport, I like to coach athletes that, you know, they're, they're committed to the sport. They want to do their best. So I kind of try to teach them the right way out the bat, which mm -hmm. I, would, I wish I would have known that. Um, yep. so I did four examples here, um, and basically we're just going to go line by line and talk about them and kind of wh why this is so important. 
Um, so the first one, I see this one all the time, Sean. I don't know if you do. It's somebody that's newer to tracking the macros, and it's always with this banana thing. Um, yep. They love to do the first one, which is one medium banana. And to me, that's very relative, right? Who's to say what a medium banana is? If I, you know, we were at the grocery store and I told you to grab what you thought was a medium banana and then I grabbed it and then we weighed it, it would probably be completely different. Yes. Um, Mm -hmm. A typical banana, and to me, like a large banana, is usually about 115 to 120 grams. And again, that's that's me saying like a full-size banana. Um, So a medium banana here you see would be like the same amount of carbs. Um, That's right. So... So number one is just make sure that you're tracking in grams or ounces. That's what I always say, Uh like no cups, no tablespoons. Basically, the only thing that you can really get away with is like single serving items, like one rice cake. Like you don't have to weigh a rice cake, obviously. Right. Um, That you could just put one rice cake in. Um, But also with the banana, you want to eat or you want to weigh the parts that you eat, not the Correct. There's a lot of I'm literally sitting freaking. here because right before we got on, I, ha- I had my banana this morning. There you Look go. at my TLC right here. Is that this a large? Is, I consider this to be a medium banana, yes. And it, and I, that's why usually my medium bananas are anywhere from 90 to 100 grams. That's what they there are. There you go. Yeah. Every time. So it's, it's funny because I kind of have it eyeballed now and I go to the grocery <laughs> store and I grab the bunches that I know are going to be that weight. The size. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And again, like when you're doing this long enough, like you just mentioned, like that mm-hmm. is a version of intuitive eating, right? You've been tr- pull- eating these bananas long enough that you used to weigh them all the time. And then yep. you knew it was between 90 and 100. And now you know about the size you need to get yep. to that. And that's, that's just from years of practice. Um, right. But when we're in a contest prep phase or, you know, when we're trying to be as accurate as possible, just make sure that you're weighing it in grams and the parts that you're actually eating on the scale. And I was going to pull up I, because I do... Um, weigh my bananas. So you've got the med- you've got the medium or the 120 grams here. So typically, if you're doing a medium, my my medium banana, which is 97 grams, which was what I logged, it's 22 grams of carbs. So it's a it's a five five gram difference, you know, which makes sense. That's yeah. about right. Yeah, yeah. Which at the end of the day, when you're in contest prep, everything counts. You know, for those of you that that have not done this before. You know, whenever we're talking about trying to get to our, our zeros at the, at the end of the day, zero carbs, zero fat, zero protein left over, we try to be within four to five grams of that zero. So already, if you go in and you don't log your banana correctly, you're already outside of that zone for the first yeah. thing, first thing that you did for the day, right? Yeah. And banana is one of those fruits. I love banana, by the way. Everybody who's mm-hmm. on Team J knows that bananas are it when, uh, when uh, on peak week. But anyway, um, like, man, I forgot where I was going with that. Oh, banana is one of those things where it's low volume, high, very yes. high calorie. So, yes. it's, you know, just a little bit, yeah, it makes a big difference in your mm-hmm. macros. So yep. um, definitely one of those ones you want to track as accurately Versus as possible. if you're going to do like watermelon or, or something like that. Blueberries. Yeah, there's, they're very low volume. You know, you can get a, or low density. You know, low you density, can get a lot, high yes, volume. Yes, you can get a lot more watermelon in. <laughs> So, you know, watermelon or cantaloupe or honeydew, like those are some of my favorites, like in the summer when they're in in season, Uh, because you can eat a lot more of them for the same amount of carbs as what you would get in a banana or something like that. Or berries, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's one of the the, uh, big one that I see. Um, Any more about the banana that you have? Um, I don't think so. And, And again, I think, you know, this is something to think about as well, like when you're in a prep or even off season two, you got to be careful about the the amount of sugar that you eat. You know the amount of, of fruit that you eat. It's not bad to eat fruit. It's actually a good thing. The fiber helps you go to the bathroom. All those kinds of things. The potassium in the banana is great for your recovery. All of those things. But <laughs> you don't want to be eating a banana every meal either. You know sometimes sometimes people get on this kick of they just they eat fruit all the time, which is not it's not. I'm like I'm not trying to say it's bad, but again moderation. I make sure I have fruit every day, but I have one serving of fruit every day, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's more about the that. glycemic index, right? Yeah. So the banana mm-hmm. hits the glycemic index very high, whereas yes. you had blueberries is much, much lower in the glycemic index. Mm-hmm. So you're not getting these peaks and valleys of insulin um, yes. spiking and then dropping and spiking and dropping and that can lead to fat mass, right? So it's yeah. just about, it's just about picking the, the right foods for mm-hmm. the goal at that time. And just like you're saying, I, I have a banana once a day when I'm in prep, but then the yeah. other meals I have berries to keep the glycemic index a little mm-hmm. bit lower. Yep. 
Yep. yep. So also um, with the banana, when I have the banana, I have the fats with it too to kind of help blunt that insulin. Which spike. is why a lot of people will put it into their protein shake or something like exactly. that too. You know what I mean? Like they'll do that with, with um, peanut butter or whatever, that kind of thing too. Like I just did that for one of my clients because she was having a really hard time getting her food in. Like she just was really under eating. So, you know, we talk about macros, but at the same time, sometimes you just got to give people a little bit more direction. So, you know, I said for your, for your breakfast and I gave her, you know, chicken, oatmeal, peanut butter and banana. I said, get all this in your first meal. I said, then we're, we're ahead of the game on your calories for the day. You know what I mean? But giving her something that's really, really solid and satiating for that first meal of the day. There you go. So, um, all right. So this is also a big one is rice. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like a lot of people don't understand how to track rice. So really it's, with within macros, ultimately, it doesn't matter if it's cooked or weighed raw or cooked. Mm -hmm. You just have to stay consistent with it. Correct. Um, I have some clients that like to make their rice every single meal fresh. So they will okay. weigh the rice uncooked or raw, and mm -hmm. then they'll cook it. But I always just tell them to make sure that they do it the same way every time. Yep. The same thing goes for cooked rice. So for me, I do cooked rice because mm -hmm. I eat a lot of it. So mm -hmm. what I do is I weigh out the same raw amount, which is 400 grams of raw weight with four cups of water every yep. time. Yep. And that way we know. So what you have to think about is with rice is that it's going to add water to it, mm -hmm. which is going to affect the weight of the cooked food that you track. So for me, that's just however you cook it, just cook it the same every time, the same yep. water, the same boiling method, et cetera. That way you're getting the same volume of food every single time. Um, so this was just two examples. So the first one under meal two is that raw weight, right? So the idea of you doing half a cup or a quarter of a cup, again, I never advise to do cups or tablespoons. I usually like grams. So even if yes, it's raw weight, weight, I tell my clients to do grams or ounces because it's the most accurate as possible. Yes. Um, and then underneath that would be the cooked version. And this is usually what I do and what you see my clients do, which is they just have, you know, they make their, their rice the same way. They have a big pot of it. When they're making a meal, they just weigh out whatever the cooked amount is that they need. But they know that the volume of that rice is the same every time. Yeah, agreed. And then, and again, going back to the, 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 the important part is there, there is the consistency part of it. If you do it one way, always do it that way. You know, um, something else that I do, is when you go to Costco or you go to the grocery store or whatever, they have the, the individual servings, right? That's what I do most of the time when it comes to rice because it just is what it is. It's, it's going to be the same no matter what. Like if you get those little minute cups, you know, it's going to be the same thing every time. Um, Costco has these these bowls, these rice bowls that are the, the sticky jasmine white rice that, you know, yes. you would have for your, um, for your sushi or whatever. Love those. The, uh, Me too. And, and you know exactly that, that that's what's in that little container. You know what I mean? And it makes yeah. it easy to travel with those. Like it's, it's so much easier. I'm a, and I, I don't say like I'm a rice snob, but I don't like rice. that's like been sitting there. I don't like it when it's like mushy. I don't like it when it's overcooked. I don't like any of those kinds of things. So I'd rather just have the, have the prepackaged and just stick it in the microwave and we're good to go. My so, favorite rice is like a 90 second, um, jasmine rice. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 From Target. Like that's like my favorite tasting rice ever, but yeah, you know, it's expensive and I eat a yeah. lot of it. So yeah, I understand. Well, that, was the, that was the thing too. When we, when I was in Japan, I was like, everywhere I went, it was like little individual things of rice. I was like, this is fantastic. I was like, I can take these everywhere I go. And of Absolutely. course it was Japan. So it was, it was better than what you're going to get here. So yeah. yeah now I order my 20 fun. pound bag of raw rice from Amazon and <laughs> I get that about every few weeks. Seriously. See, I only crazy. do rice. I don't even do rice every day. I do rice like once every couple of days. So okay. when I get into prep, I, I do a little bit more on the rice. Um, Cause that's the other thing too, when we're talking about carbs, like that is one of the easier ones to control versus like, it's hard to control potatoes. You know what yes. I mean? Cause again, going back to what we were talking about with the bananas, it's the same thing when it comes to comes to potatoes, yes. you know? So I do tend to eat more rice when I'm actually in prep, when I'm off season, not as much. And I think I just do that at, um, just because it, again, I want variety when I'm off season. And then, you know, when I go into prep, it's easier and it's more consistent when I'm in prep. So, and we used to, we used to make these big pots of the rice cooker rice and like, it would just sit there and it's just like, I, I don't know if it's not fresh. I just, it's to me, it's gross. If it's not fresh, I just I can't get it. do it. I get it. 
I get it. We all have our, <laughs> our food affiliations, and uh, yeah. rice could be one of them where it gets, you know, mushy or too uh-huh. hard. Got it. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. Yep. Or like you leave it in there and you forget about it. And like you said, it gets all crusty and it's like, oh man, I got to throw this yeah. whole thing away. It's like, <laughs> oh my God. Oh. I get it. <laughs> totally get it. <laughs> so that's just the, and, and if you've never had like, like the, the mushy rice where it's kind of like, like melting together. Oh, oh yeah, no that's the worst. It's the worst texture ever. So it sure anyway. is. <laughs> all right. All right. So. Moving, moving on to peanut butter. Moving on to peanut butter. <laughs> oh, so this is a good one. By the way, I don't know why I did chunky peanut butter, so sorry about that. Um, so I actually did, just did a post earlier on in the week about the misconception of getting stage lean and things like that. And I think that what people tend to just always underestimate the amount of bites and cheats that they take off plan. Listen, yeah. I'm human. I do it too. I like the I like the spoon when I'm in prep and things like that. But you know, the the example that I gave is five grams of nut butter is about three fat, one carb, right? So if you do that twice a day, that really adds up by the end of the week. It was about 480 calories if you did five grams over, right? So, you know, if you kind of do what you weigh out and then lick, or, you know, if you're doing tablespoons, which we're going to talk about in a second, it's so easy to get off track, especially with those fats. Um, So with peanut butter, the same example of banana, you know, if Sean, I gave you a spoon and I had a spoon and we had a thing of, you know, peanut butter in front of us. And I said, take out one tablespoon and you took out what you think your tablespoon is. And then I did the same thing and we weighed it. They would be completely different. Um, So just for reference, one tablespoon of peanut butter is 16 grams and two tablespoons is 32 grams. Right. So um, here, what I did is I did the one tablespoon and you could see the macros there. And then I did 22 for somebody that maybe was eating those five grams over, right. Just kind of mm-hmm. eyeballing it or licking the spoon. And you could see, you know, how much that can throw you off, you know, by the yeah. end of the Look week. at the fat content. That's eight grams versus 11. It's a big deal. Yeah. Which, yeah, like we, we as coaches recognize that, but to someone it's like, it's only three more grams of fat. Well, if you do the math on the calories, right. And if we're trying to be in a caloric deficit and you're off by the end of the week of over consuming to what your coach wants of 480 calories, that's a yeah. lot. That's, that's a one lot. cardio session at least. Right. Yep. So yep. it's, it, it adds up, you know, and that's, that's where as an athlete, something that I'm really going to challenge myself this prep and I'm really trying to get mentally prepared for is I want to be like, locked in like a hundred percent, like really try to minimize bites and cheats, like really try to make this prep 150%. And this is where if I want to give my challenge to myself, because I want to see if I can get an easier prep out of it from yeah. really just yeah. being hyper focused and zoned in because I tend to start a prep and not because I think it's because of the bites and cheats and things like that. This is just me trying to grow and elevate my preps more. And this is me being vulnerable right now to everybody watching. You're my accountability, right? Like, yeah. but typically the first eight weeks prep, I don't lose any weight. That's, that's always the way it's been for me. And I'm like, you know, going so hard and things like that. And it's so frustrating. But yep. I want to see if I really challenge myself that way, if I can get a different response from my body. Um, but that's where that peanut butter, you know, that's a really great example of how you can kind of maybe clean it up and, you know, see yeah. if you can drop some more weight and get to a deficit faster. Well, and that comes into play, not just in the peanut butter aspect, but also, you know, cheating your intensity in the gym or your cardio or things like Anything. that. Too. People do it all the time. You know, it's Anything. like, I'm good. You know, the, like I was saying with the, with my steps earlier, I'm like, yeah, my steps are okay, but I really like, I need to improve them. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it is what it is. Like for, you know, we always talk about it, like cardio health is anywhere from eight to 10,000 10, steps a day is where you need to be. And I'm not even close. You know what I mean? Right. So it's like, those are the, those are the little things that are like, you're, good to great you know there's a difference between being good and there's and being great and it's all in those little teeny tiny details like that and again you go back to the peanut butter this is really simple it's like you you think you're not doing anything wrong but in in reality at the end of the at the end of the week you've got an extra 500 calories in your diet yeah. just because you were doing those little tiny little sneaks you know yeah and that yeah. adds up really really fast adds up really Listen, really fast right and we get it like we've been there we're hungry right. we're starving mm-hmm. and it's like what's one what's one little let you know and yep. that when we're doing that consistently that's where we run into trouble you know yeah so you just you just got to be honest you just got to be honest and real with yourself you know and so. if you can't do it get rid of it like i don't do nut butters and i do that for a reason because <laughs> I, I can't control myself and i know that i would yeah, much rather have just yeah, I'll just do, yeah. I'll do almonds. I'll do, you know, 
walnuts, I'll do cashews, whatever, but because they're individual nuts and I know I'm not going to sit there and overeat on those. That's just not my thing. You know yep. what I mean? But the nut butters is like, okay, one little extra lick's not a problem. Yeah, it is. And that's it where you get into trouble. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So if you can't handle it, you know, you know that, get rid of it. Get it out. Get it out. Yep. 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 So. All right. We think we got one more. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, so really early on in my career, I should have done this one, but um, I had a client. She was supposed to be in a caloric deficit. She wasn't dropping weight. So, you know, we go for, through like two, four weeks of this. And finally, I get her on a call and she was on a meal plan. And we, uh, it's actually Marie. So Drew took over Marie Hodges, who just turned pro with Drew last year figure. So mm-hmm. I started with her as a lifestyle coach for two years. Marie, shout out to you. Remember when you did this? Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, so she's not dropping weight. She's like, I'm frustrated, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, all right, let's get on a call. So we go, we get on a call. We go over her, her meal plan, like line by line. So, you know, I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, are you doing this? Yes, you're doing this. And we get to the chicken. And I'm like, so are you doing chicken? Yes. I'm like, okay, are you doing chicken breast? Pregnant pause. Oh gosh. And I said, hello, like are you? Um, so I've been doing chicken thighs for two weeks. Oh. So here for, you know, anybody new to macros or amateurs, like chicken thighs and chicken breasts are completely different. So chicken thighs have a way higher fat content and chicken breast is leaner. So she assumed that chicken is chicken and just did an even swap of chicken thigh for chicken breast at the same amount. Well, she was over consuming about 18 grams of fat per meal that she had the chicken in. So as soon as we got that switched out, she went back to dropping and everything was fine again. So here it's really important. I was showing to you, number one, if you're, when you are tracking a protein, pick the right protein, right? So if it's a steak, what kind of steak, right? Yes. so many different kinds. Is it filet? Is it a ribeye? Is it a New York strip? Is it a top sirloin? Typically, if somebody is like in prep or something like that and they want steak, they go for top sirloin because it's one of the leanest. Um, so making sure that you're picking the right source, okay? And yep. chicken breast and chicken thighs are not the same. So making sure yep. you're picking that. But also if you're tracking in raw versus cooked, again, it doesn't matter as long mm-hmm. as you're weighing and tracking, you know, they're, they're consistent. So I showed you both. Um, the first one is the top sirloin cooked and then the raw. And if you notice how different the macros are, right? Mm-hmm. So just yep. making sure that you're, you know, picking the verified source. So I did the USDA um, because usually that's, you know, a verified source and things like that. But mm-hmm. also if you're doing raw versus cooked and the correct source as well is super, super important. Not mm-hmm. all meats are the same. That's right. And also, you know, depending on where you're buying it from too, you know, you, you can do the little barcode scanner and all that kind of stuff. But if they don't, if that doesn't calculate, you can put it in, you can, you can add it. You know what I mean? You can add your own macros in so that you get it correct. You know what I mean? Like, um, we, cause we have, we talked about this before we get meat delivered now, right. From what is it? Some butcher boxes, whatever the, whatever it is, but they give you all of the macros of what each one of those cuts are, you know what awesome. I mean? So, you, so that you know exactly what you're, what you're putting into your, your body. You know what I mean? It's, it, ma- it makes a big difference. And you're right. Like flank steak is a whole lot leaner than like a top sirloin or a ribeye or something like that. You know what I mean? It's, you, you gotta pay attention to those kinds of things. Some people will do that. They'll just sit there. Oh, I had steak. Okay, cool. But what cut of steak was it? Well, cut. That, that's a big deal. You yeah. know? Yeah, the, the, the better it tastes, the fattier it is. <laughs> I think Drew just did the macros, which I don't know why he does this. He loves to do this to me. Um, on like a, I forget what ribeye we had. It wasn't a ribeye. It was maybe a New York strip or something the other night. For eight ounces raw, it was 68 something grams of fat and one piece of meat, right? Yeah. So that's where I'm saying. And and listen, if we, this is why tracking macros is another great tool, in my opinion, because you start to learn what's actually in your food. That's right? right. Like it's really mm-hmm. easy. Like before tracking and things like that, you just go to a restaurant, you order and you have no clue what's in it. But when you start yep. tracking, you start to be more mindful. And it goes back to what we were talking about, about learning how to intuitively eat. Part yeah. of learning how to intuitively eat is knowing subconsciously what's in your food and mm-hmm. picking the right choices and then also picking the right amounts visually. Um, so it, it's just, it's just one of those things where, you know, we, we talked about too, what Jamie always says is, you know, we want to teach our clients how to fish, not give them the fish. And that's right. what's going to establish the thoughts in the back of the mind to make those better choices long-term. That's right. And it's funny you mentioned the, the chicken thighs thing. Cause I have a new client that she's, um, I took over her prep and, uh, she asked me this past week, she's like, is there a reason why, um, I can't have chicken thigh versus chicken breast other than the fat content? And I said, 
no, it's fat content. <laughs> I was like, That's I was like, like, you can have chicken thigh, but not now because you can't, you can't afford it in your macros right now. I was like, you know, that's that's the only reason. Is there's nothing wrong with that actual, you know, food source, but just right now it doesn't fit with what your plan is. But again, she asked versus just going and eating it. She asked, and I was like, I'd, I'd prefer you do that so that way I can I can explain why we're not doing it. You know what I mean? Definitely. Um, versus just 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 eating it, thinking it's okay. <laughs> right. You know. <laughs> yeah. And just to give you guys context, like about a hundred grams of meat is about three ounces, so mm -hmm. it's not a lot. You know, it's, yeah. it's not, not a lot. And you're consuming at least six grams of fat for most of us. That's about a quarter of our fat, you know, as mm -hmm. females during the day. So it's like, you know, you have to make that choice. Like, would you rather eat it through protein? Would you rather eat it through another source? And right. that's, that's a personal choice, obviously, but it really just depends on how much fats you have for that day. And, you know, strategically what you're trying to do with your nutrient timing and things like that. Correct. Yep. Yep. It's funny because again, she, you know, she, this same girl, she just, I had a call with her yesterday. She's like, I just realized I thought I knew how to eat. I don't. <laughs> she's like, I had no idea what I was doing. She's like, I really thought that I was eating healthy. <laughs> she was, so that's she, a great point. You yeah. know, like on consults, you know, when I ask people, yeah. how are you eating? They're like, well, I eat healthy. I'm like, okay, well, what does that mean to mm -hmm. you? Right. Yep. To you, what does that mean? And I think a lot of people feel that way. Well, I eat healthy mm -hmm. and then they start tracking and they're like, oh, I thought I was eating healthy. I was not eating healthy at all. I'm like, yes, that's right. what I was trying to tell you, you know, yep. and that's where we get into our own way of like, you know, you're hiring a coach and you're like, I've done everything. It's not working. And then the coach starts working with you and you're like, no, we do have all of these holes that we can work on, which is a great thing, right? There's yeah. things that we Absolutely. can work on to keep improving, but that's where as a person, as an athlete, as a client, you have to be willing to kind of accept that it, what you think you might be doing correctly is really not what needs to be happening to get you yeah. to your next yeah. And she made me laugh because we were doing a posing session and I'm talking to her and she's like looking off to the side and I'm like, she didn't pay attention to me. She did, so, so at the end of it, she's like, she's like, I'm sorry. She's like, I, she's like, I don't want to act like, like I'm not paying attention. She goes, but I got a mirror right here. She goes, and I swear I look better today than I did even on Monday. That's <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you do. <laughs> like, made me laugh. Checking my stuff out. <laughs> I, she was she was watching herself the whole time i was like i love it it was fantastic that's awesome <laughs> that's good see and i've already seen those, those immediate changes i love that that's right and that's the thing it's like because she was she was so close on a lot of things but so way off on the other things that just in a matter of like a week a week and a half like she's seen her body turn around and she's like damn you know like it's it's cool to see that kind of thing happen i love those that. things start coming together it was it was fun it was a good moment i was i was it's laughing my favorite was part like, of coaching <laughs> it is it really is. It really you is. Know, when fun. they come to you in like the first four weeks and then they're like, oh my God, I'm already seeing the changes. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's the, uh, the most awesome part of my job. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It was fantastic. So um, anything else that you wanted to add on the macro topic of what not to do before we kind of close out this particular segment? No, I think we have some okay. good questions, right? To yeah, we have some good questions to go first. through. Yeah, let's roll So. Over. Let's go into the first one. Actually, this, this is actually part of the macros thing too. So let's go ahead and do this one, the okay. how, to track so, how to track sodium. Okay. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. We talked about this, um, kind of touched on it a little bit as we were talking about the what not to do, what to do. Um, when we're in a contest prep, you have to be very, very cognizant of how much sodium you're taking in. Um, just in general, every, every day to day, you want to be right, re relatively regular so that you're not, you know, inflamed, taking in too much, taking and not taking enough water to flush it out, things like that, paying attention to what you're, you're taking in. But once you get into prep, it's really, really important for those inflammation reasons and things like that as well. Um, just keep your balance and in, in, in within your body too. So um, I've screwed this up. So I know other people probably have as well. <laughs> so, um, and it all depends on how far along you are in this and everything too. If you're a relatively new competitor, it's not going to be as much of a, of a, of an issue versus somebody like us who've been doing this for a while. Um, and I'll use myself as an example is how I screwed this up this past year. Um, I've always done it this way. And what I do is I have a salt shaker. It's a, it's a sea salt shaker. It's the same shaker. I take it with me everywhere I go and I do the same number of twists on every one of my meals. That's what I do. Right. Um, that's just how I thought I've always done it. And I got Celine this year going into, you know, Hawaii and Japan, Jamie asked me, she's like, so how much sodium are you putting on this? I was like, I just do the same twists. She's like, that's not detailed enough. <laughs> I was like, I was like, but I've never done it any other way. That's how I've always done it. I was like, I guess I've just never been conditioned enough for it to make that much of a difference. 
So how do you track your sodium so that it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't become that kind of a problem? So I put, um, I do Himalayan sea salt and mm -hmm. I put it in a Ziploc bag, mm -hmm. um, especially like when I'm traveling every week and things like that. And then I just put my a quarter teaspoon in the bag. So I have a separate quarter teaspoon that's in my salt bag all the time. Um, obviously when you're tracking food, when you're tracking food within your MyFitnessPal, and this is assuming that you're not adding any additional seasonings or things with sodium in it, that your food na naturally has sodium. So you yes. naturally have that sodium load. And then depending on where your coach wants your sodium. So let's say they want 2,500 milligrams per day, then you would add the sodium on top of your meals in order to hit that. So you literally just track like you would anything else in your MyFitnessPal salt or Himalayan salt. Um, this is one that you can put in tablespoons because it's very hard for the scale to register salt on a yes. scale. Um, so I just, you know, eyeball the, the uh, table. Some Sometimes it's a full tablespoon. Sometimes it's a half a tablespoon. Whatever my sodium load is, that's what I do per meal. I try to put more salts around my workout for pumps mm -hmm. and that um, and then to try to taper the salt down as, as my day gets gets to an end um, but that's how I track it so like I said yeah. you know like when I'm cooking my meats and things like that I do not add any sodium um, yeah. currently I am ordering from mega fit meals so when yeah. their bulk proteins come to me um, I put into the my fitness pal what the sodium load is for now right. so that I way I'm taking account of that sodium um, so Again, just like Sean, this is something that I didn't really do up until really last year where I got really consistent with it. I was tracking sodium with cracks and things like that, but not as consistent as I was last year with it. And really toward the end of last year, really toward like when I won um, Hurricane Pro, like three weeks yeah. before that, I started really tracking sodium to a T, really tracking everything to a T and my physique really responded. So just like mm -hmm. Sean said, you know when you're an amateur and your first few shows and you know, you don't really have like the, the, the amount of density maybe that you might need or the amount of conditioning that you, you might need, not really a big player. Um, but when we're at the national level fighting though for those top two spots, pro card, things like that, I would argue that somebody that's tracking their sodium and very dialed into a team can really like, with their physique. Um, so it's, it's very simple, but it's, it is something that people tend to overthink and get very overwhelmed with. Yeah. Or they just don't do it at all, like I was doing. Or just, just doing, doing it at all. <laughs> I'm just doing what I thought I was supposed to be doing, and it was wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was like, that's what I said to Jamie. I was like, oh, I guess I just never got this condition before where it made a difference. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, and man, something that you can tell, too, like if you if you start tracking your sodium, right? So if you started at like two 2,000 or whatever milligrams per day, and your weight starts to have all these fluctuations, yeah. I would say that that's probably – a reason for you to start tracking like if yeah. your sodium intake once you start tracking is going up down up down up down it's trying to find that balance then yep. you are affected right now in whatever sodium load you're taking in so trying to find something that keeps your weight very consistent mm -hmm. would would really help right the idea of a prep is to keep your body very predictable and sodium yes. is something that can make you hold water or lose water or keep homeostasis balance but sodium is also very important to everything that we do in bodybuilding too so you don't want to yes. minimize sodium and have none so it's just about finding that that load when i start my yep. clients on prep we start at a certain amount we see how their weight responds we do daily weigh-ins and we're seeing if we're getting this if it shoots yes. up then i know that we need to pull sodium down and then we try to just find that that balance and we keep it the same through prep that's the idea yep. is to try to find that and keep it consistent Yep. And, and to keep into the account too, like, for example, if you're taking in supplements, um, energy drinks, things like that, they all contain sodium. So I know this is something else I screwed up too, because in the past, Jamie has let me keep my, my uh, energy drinks in all the way through peak week. Um, and I was, she told me this year after I was already in peak week that I should have cut them the week before. And I was like, Oh my bad. I was like, I've just always kept them in. And again, that's going to, that's going to affect your sodium levels. That's going to affect how you actually, you know, expel uh, water and things. So I was like, Oh my bad. Figured that out peak week in Hawaii. <laughs> and when, right. And when you do remove those energy drinks, the powders and all of the additives yes. that you're supposed to a week or two weeks before stage, depending on your coach, remember they have sodium and it's the sodium's going to yeah. go down. So you might have to add a little bit more salt right. to the mm -hmm. meals or whatever to get that sodium load Balance. back to being consistent. 
Yep, absolutely. Yep. So yep. it's not about, and a lot of people, there's a misnomer that you're supposed to take all the salt out and all that kind of stuff. And that's not the case. You want to stay balanced. Just like you said, you want to stay even across the whole board. So if you start Correct. taking out the energy drinks and the supplements and stuff, you're right. Sometimes you have to put the sodium back in. Correct. So, you know, just keeping all of that in mind, but just keep the actual tracking very simple. Like you said, with the, with the quarter of a teaspoon or whatever, you know, what you can do if you do use the salt shaker kind of thing is just do the salt shaker inside, inside of the, uh, Ziploc baggie and then just use your, your, um, teaspoon. Um, yeah. I do that. I do that when I, when I do my pre-workout because I get the pre-workouts from, um, bulk supplements. So I just use my little quarter of a teaspoon. We're good for the, for the pre-workout. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. So same, same concept, same concept yep. there. Just keep it simple. Keep it as simple as you can. So you stay consistent with it. That's all. Simple and consistent. Don't overthink yeah. it. Don't overthink it. Yep. All right, yep. cool. Awesome. So there's that one. Um, let's talk about this one. Natty now. <laughs> this, is a, this is a hot topic. We just came up with this little this little uh, catchphrase right here. Natty now. Is that a Natty thing? now. Um, so there was, this, long story short, there's people that, um, and, and I actually think this is a good thing that they're open about this kind of thing, that they go and they're on PEDs and things like that. Um, and then when they come off of them, they then say that they are natural and they're trying to show, you know, what they're actually doing natural, right? So there's a big, some people don't like this. Some people think, well, you still took PEDs, so you're no longer natural and things like that. Um, so we coined the phrase natty now. So <laughs> as we were talking about this particular topic before we got on here, we're like, we're just going to call it natty now. So, natty now. To all you influencers out there, if you were on PEDs and open about it and things like that, and now you're not, just say you're natty now. That that takes care of everything. Then you don't have to say, like, listen, I'm I'm a natural athlete, because some people will say you're not because you have supplemented in the past, but you're natty now, currently, as you are today, right? So, you know, <laughs> this is just a kind of funny topic, but the reason why this came up is because there was a whole Facebook thing, um, and... The long and short of it is I was participating in a thread on this particular group um, talking about an influencer who was doing this and people didn't realize that I was actually in the thread talking about it. I was actually standing up for this particular influencer because I thought it was good they were being honest about their situation and all of that kind of stuff. And they were trying to figure out who this influencer was. And all they knew about this influencer was that this influencer was an IP pro, they were a coach, and that they were transitioning and changing divisions. They were going from one division to another. But the original poster didn't actually say who this particular person was. So everybody in the comments is trying to find out who this person is, right? So one of the girls in the group goes and just searches on Instagram and types in switching divisions. And guess who popped up? Me. <laughs> Because I post about the fact that I have changed from figure to bikini. So I post about that quite often, right? And she went through my Instagram profile and screenshotted my Instagram profile where I'm talking about this and posted it three different times inside of this thread, basically saying that I was the one that everybody was talk about, talking about which I wasn't, I wasn't that person. I'm like, you do realize that I'm actually on this thread. I'm talking Commenting. about this. Yeah, I'm actually here. You're posting this thinking thinking that you found the person that everyone's talking about. And I'm literally on the thread. You're like, hi, uh, I'm right here. <laughs> I'm like, hi, that's but me. it's not me. <laughs> so, you know, I went in and I said, listen, I said, it's not cool to, to try to call somebody out when it's not them. You know, if I wasn't there paying attention and I wasn't, I didn't see this, I wouldn't have known that she had posted me. And then all these girls in this thread might have thought I was that person. I didn't even think about that. That's what I, yeah. that's where my head went to. I was like, now all of a sudden these hundreds of women that are posting, the thousands of women that are in the group think I'm the one that's doing this and it's not me. Right. It's not me. Right. You know, now I give credit to the girl that actually went and screenshot my profile because she came back into the, into the group and she apologized. That was huge. It actually ended up being a really great discussion. It ended up being um, a really good thread. Everybody was like, wow, you guys both handled this so maturely. Like, you know, you screw up. Everybody screws up. Everybody can make a mistake, but it's how you respond to that that makes a difference. And it ended up being very, actually a really good thing. It was it ended up being a really like, like, oh, I love this. Like, cause for me, it was like disheartening. I was like, man, I'm here trying to help you guys. And I get called out for something that I'm I'm not even a part of. This is not this is not even me. I'm like, y'all are yeah. making assumptions that it's me, you know? And I was like, what the hell? Like I I mean, I 
I literally work in this industry every single day trying to help people. And now I'm getting called out for some bullshit that I'm not even a part of. Like, that's not cool. So my point in bringing all this up is you can't believe everything you see online. That's the first thing. And the second thing is, is be careful about how you try to go out and judge people on these ty types of topics and things like that, because you could be completely ruining somebody's reputation that has nothing to do with anything that you're talking about. It's just your own assumptions in your mind based on a couple pieces of data that you saw that don't have any basis in reality at all. Like the, literally the only things that had that tied me to this particular thread was the fact that I am a pro, I am a coach, and I switched divisions 10 years ago. But the fat, the actual topic of the thread had nothing to do with me at all. But all of a sudden, I was the one being called out for it. So, you know, I just want to give you give the two cents. Of be who you are actually calling out and who you are actually trying to say this person's doing this, this person's doing that when you don't know. You just don't yeah. know. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I mean, does it really matter? Right. Like, does no. it really matter? Let's take it to the start of the topic was they were talking about an athlete that was switching divisions and she came out and was, you know, open about PEDS usage or whatever. That's it. That's the end of the cool. Yeah. Like we know that check next. That's right. Like, why did, why do we have to go on this ghost hunt to like find the person? Right. So, right. you know, and me, me, in my opinion, I would never do this online, but if I were inclined to, I would have to know for sure that, the, like, not just off of Google search. So kudos to the girl for, you know, apologizing. Yes, I did 100%. read the messages and you guys both handled mm -hmm. it super, super well. And she's right. Mm -hmm. we, we are all human and we make mistakes. And, you know, hopefully next time, you know, a different choice will be made. You know? yeah. And going back to what you just said, does it really affect your life? Like, no. If that person is doing that thing. And, you know, at the end of the day, like, this is what I said too. I was like, it sounds to me like this person is being honest about what they're doing. I was like, you yeah, know, you may not like it. You may not agree with what she's doing, but at least she's being honest about the fact that she wants to she's not. She can say Absolutely. she's natty now. She can say she's natty now. She's not taking anything right now. You know, I yeah. It, cool. Yeah. Like you may not think that that's right. You may not agree with it, but at least she's being honest about the situation. At least she's telling yeah. you what she's doing. You know? Yeah. I don't care what you do or what you don't do. Just don't comment or be honest. You know? Right. Just and if, if you don't like it, then there's this thing called fast it. <laughs> there's this thing called not engaging with it. There's this thing called, if you don't like that person, you can unfollow. You know, there, there, there's there's things you can do versus trying to be all bitchy about it for no reason. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? That's what yeah. she's chosen to do with her life. How does it affect you? It doesn't affect yeah. We talked about this yeah. before. If you want to be a natural athlete, that's phenomenal. If you want to be an enhanced athlete, that's phenomenal. Why does what they do affect Right. right. If you're if you're only being natural because you want to have that 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 card that says I'm natural, fantastic. Or if you only want to, if you only only want to enhance because everybody else is enhancing, that's a problem. Yeah. You know, you should want to do it for you versus personal choice. Else, right. Absolutely. At the end of the day, either way, either way you decide to go, you should be doing it for you and not because everybody else is doing it or not doing it. Yeah, I agree. And be nice. Just be nice. <sighs> That's the simple. That's the, the simple. Like, don't call people out for bullshit they're not involved in. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? Yep. Yep. <laughs> I was like, Stay I'm literally in your own lane. I know. I'm like, I'm literally right here. I'm like, I see you talking shit about me. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm that girl. <laughs> it wasn't me either, everybody. Like, it wasn't me. <laughs> It wasn't me. It wasn't me, but cool. But again, at the end of the day, when that all that whole thing bro broke down, I was actually very impressed that she came out and she owned the fact that she that she shouldn't have done it. You know, I was I was I'm very happy with that. I was like, that shows a ton of maturity. I said, people are such keyboard warriors nowadays. It's like sometimes they see that stuff and they just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep justifying. You know, like like we talked about with Mr. Greg. Oh, justifying <laughs> like just come and apologize that's all you gotta do just say you screwed just, up that's all you gotta do just that's one it. apology that's it just one yep. apology that's it that's all yep. just say yeah I, I get what you're saying i shouldn't have done that cool yep cool cool story Everybody we're done yep. <laughs> you know such a simple concept i know right oh, but ego <laughs> anyway all right <laughs> let's do one more question um i thought this was a actually a really good question too on how to take uh pan off 
how to take tan off quickly between back to back shows. So I have a method of doing this. How about you? What's your method of taking tan off? Um, I like using it's called it's a product called Tan X. Um, okay. I think you get it on Amazon or and or their website. Um, so after the show, I will go in the shower and I'll spray this all over my body. And then I just kind of let it sit there for like three to five minutes. So I'll just stand in the shower, scroll on my phone, no water, just kind of let it get in there. Um, mm -hmm. It does kind of like tingle and burn a little bit, it's kind of pulling it out of your skin. Okay. And then I take a washcloth and I just scrub, 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 scrub. If I know that I'm doing a show that next weekend, I try to get as much of that tan off as possible uh, that first night because when yes. it's kind of fresh on your skin, it's easier to come off and it's not really absorbing and, and continues to develop on your skin. Um, and then the next morning, um, or well, when I come out of the shower, moisturize, 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 moisturize. Make sure you keep your skin nice and uh, hydrated so that it's not dry and kind of holding yes. the uh, tan in there. Um, next morning, I repeat the same process. So the TNX, five minutes, scrub, 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 scrub. And usually I could get about 75% of it off at that time. And then it's usually about 90% gone by like Wednesday. Yeah. And then it's okay to me to show up with like 10% tan on going into the next show because that will kind of help you look a little bit darker and kind of help you develop a little bit more. So that's usually what I do. And it's, it's been working. But the key is moisturizing and taking yes, care moisture. of your skin also in the off season. You don't want to show up to your season with really, really dry skin. So I make it impive in my off season to really make sure I'm keeping moisture on my skin. Um, what are those brushes called now? You know, the brushes with, that help with like um, blood flow and things like that. Oh. The body brushes. Yeah. yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, dry brushing. Dry brushing. People say that's yeah. really good for like exfoliation and just getting mm -hmm. good blood flow to the area. Blood flow is good for nutrients and it helps with your skin. So um, it's, it's really taking care of your skin all year round yes. too. Yeah. Um, so I've never used the Tan X that you're talking about. I'm going to have to look that up and check that out. Um, Liquid Sunrise does have a product. It works okay. Um, but what I find for me is what you just, a lot of things you just said, taking baths is a big thing for me. So I, I take Epsom salt baths anyway. Um, so typically, the, if I've got a show back to back, I'm taking showers, right? So like I'll take the bath first. That helps a lot of it come off because you're just soaking, soaking, right? Yep. So and then once once you're done with the bath, then you shower it off, obviously. Like you don't want to sit in your in your tan bathroom. <laughs> ba ba bathtub. Nor do I want to be in a bathtub in a hotel. <laughs> Yeah. Well, so you should have seen my bathtub in, in Japan, in Japan, because I took baths every day to get rid of the inflammation a with it, with the Epsom salt, but also the tan. So the bathtub with like this ring, I tried to clean it as best I could before. I got there because I felt bad. So yeah, baths um, are a big thing for me and exfoliating, but not so hard that you're really getting abrasive on the skin. Like that's the other thing too. If you're, if you're scrubbing too much, you're making little scratches on your skin and that's actually going to be bad for when you put the tan back on. So you got to be really gentle with all this. And that's why I say body while is, is helpful with that. Um, <clears throat> All of the things that you just said, making sure that you're moisturizing a lot. I moisturize twice a day when I'm when I'm in between shows like that. When I'm like competing, when exactly. Get, when I first got out of the hub, and then again, I'll, you know, I'll go to the gym and train or whatever and come back, take a shower, do it again, you know, that kind of thing. So um, making sure that you're staying moisturized. One of the things that I have issues with, they got a little bit better, but I still have to work on it, um, is the, the sit bones underneath my, underneath my glutes. So what happens a lot of times when you get lean, and this started happening to me last year, where you sit on your butt all day long gets rougher, right? You get rougher skin because you're, you're literally sitting on like skin and bone in your seat. So it's always rubbing more than anywhere else. So you end up getting these dry patches underneath your, underneath your butt. So the mistake I made this year is exfoliating too much in that area, mm -hmm. which made it worse. So yeah. when I talked to Marilyn with Liquid Sunray, she was like, actually, you just need to really over moisturize that area. So now I understand that I started doing it a little bit. It helped a little bit going into Japan, but uh, it still wasn't great because I'd already done the damage. So again, going back to don't scrub too much, you know what I mean? Um, 
and really getting in there and moisturizing. And like you said before, in the off season, taking care of your skin as best you can. Um, you know, we've talked about this kind of thing before red light therapy, all that kind of stuff, anything you can do to help with collagen production, in your skin, anything you do with moisturizer for your skin, all of those things are going to be really helpful when you get to in season and it's going to be easier for you to put the tan on and to take it off too. So all of those things, it doesn't happen all in that one week. It happens what you've done the weeks prior. It happens now. Yeah. It happens now. Yeah, happens yeah. now. Absolutely. Start now yeah. if you're not already. Um, and, and and that's what's really going to make it more, um, again, consistent and even, just like anything else, consistent and even. Um, it's okay, like a little bit of that tan still there when you go in to get sprayed again. I actually prefer that because I'm so white. Um, but just make sure that even, you know, make sure it's even and that you don't have patches, right? And that's going to come from being really religious with the exfoliating, with the moisturizing and all of that kind of stuff. So there are several different products out there you can try and see what works best for you. But I just find, again, just doing that for me, the baths and the moisturizing and the exfoliating is just, that's, that's it. That's what, that's what you got to do. So if you go, if you're in a, you know, if you're in a hotel and you don't have a bath, then I would just say exfoliating and staying in the shower as long as you can, you know, um, anything that can I get buy, your skin um, moisture. I buy, I buy at the beginning of the season on Amazon. It's like a 10 pack of loofahs and I'll just throw yeah. like three or four loofahs and then I just toss it as soon as I'm done. But that's a yeah. little softer than the, uh, yeah. overused and over bleached hand towels that are really yeah. and rough. Um, mm -hmm. so if, if you want something a little softer too, that just get a 10 pack of loofahs, throw them in your, in your travel bag. Yep. Yep. That works too. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard thing because we, I think people just don't work at it enough is what it is. It's something you have to do daily and like twice a day when you're, when you're in those, those periods of time. So you've got to make sure you take care of it because it will 100% make a difference in how you look on stage the following week. Absolutely. So, you know, yep. you want to be as even as possible, as even as possible. So, um, so cool. We'll end it there. That'll be our last question for this week. We still got a few sitting here to, uh, talk about next week. Um, but that was good. I think that was that was a good little good little roundup of questions. So guys, when you're watching these videos, feel free. We get these we get these questions from you guys in the comments here on the on the podcast itself. Also, we put up our Insta stories. You can send them to us in our DMs. All those kinds of things. We we welcome it with what with open arms. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and if you have any questions on, on anything that we just went over when it comes to the macros and things like that, and you want us to expand, feel free to do that as well. Um, but other than that, we are off to the races. The, the season is really going to start ramping up as of this coming week. So it's getting very, it's going to get very, very busy as we go along. So it's going to be fun. We're going to have a lot of things to talk about. Um, we're have a lot of, a lot of hot topics coming up down the, down the pike here. So um, anything else you wanted to add before we finish out for today? I don't think so. I think we okay. got it all. Make sure awesome. you're tracking your macros right. Yes. Track your macros right. Um, be as consistent as you can. Consistency is always king. Um, and that's it. So that's it. for episode 30, week. we are behind the bikini. We are out and we'll be back again next week.